In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this shed using Autodesk Revit. Let's start out by going to your Documents folder. And in your Documents folder, your CEA folder. And you'll find this file here. It's a Revit file. It's called Green Utility Shed, your initials. Highlight it and rename the file with your initials. I also want to point out while we're here that there's a Microsoft Word document. It's the transcript to the eight videos. You may want to open it up and follow along. I'm going to highlight the Revit file, right mouse button, select open. I'm going to go to my project browser and start out by going down to my elevations. I'm going to select my south elevation. You notice that Revit starts out with two levels, level one and level two. And these levels correspond to your floor plans. Notice there's a, under floor plans, there's a level one and a level two. I'm going to rename these levels. I'm going to select level one and I'm going to call it floor. And Revit asks me if I want to rename the view and I do. Select yes, and you notice here in my project browser under floor plans, level one has been renamed to floor. Then come over to level two, and I'm going to rename that also. And I'll call that, I'm calling it top of plate. So now my two floor plans have been renamed here in my project browser. Notice that floor is at level zero, ground. The top of plate is at 10 feet above ground level. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the 10 feet to 8 feet. You notice that it drops 2 feet. My project browser, I'm going to go to my floor plan. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to create my house here in the center of these four markers. These four markers correspond to north, south, east, and west elevations. And they are the same as these elevations here. We were just here at the south elevation. And think of these as cameras. This is your south elevation, but it's looking north. Let's start out by creating some reference planes. Go to my architecture tab, and all the way over here on the right, I'm going to select reference plane. I'm going to draw a, a vertical reference plane. Select once and then twice. And there's my vertical reference plane. I'm going to create a horizontal reference plane. Select once and then twice. And I've drawn two lines, two reference planes. I'm going to create two more. I'm going to select this tool here, pick lines. And I'm going to set my offset. So I'm going to create another reference plane offset from the first one I created and it will be 16 feet offset. So I'm going to point to this horizontal reference plane and it's going to create a new one 16 feet away, offset 16 feet. And if I hover just below the reference plane, it'll create it down here. If I hover just above the line, it'll create it above. And so now I, I click here and now I have two reference planes, this one and then one 16 feet away here. I change my offset to 12. I'm going to create another vertical reference plane. Zoom in. And notice as I hover just a little bit to the right of the plane, it's going to create a reference plane over here on the right. If I select over here, it's going to create it on the left. I don't want it there. I want it over here on the right. So I'm positioning my cursor just a little bit to the right of this reference plane. And then I uh, select. And now I have four reference planes. I'm going to select modify twice to get out of that command. I'm going to lock these reference planes in place so they can't move. I'm going to draw a window around the re four reference planes and I'm going to select this tool here, pin. And you notice I have pin heads at each of these reference planes and the reference planes are now locked in place and I can't inadvertently move them. The only way that I can move them is if I unpin them using this command here, unpin. Hit modify twice to get out of that command. 
I'm going to go ahead and create my floor. I'm going to create it at the floor level. So I'm going to, in my floor plans, I'm going to select floor. And then in my architecture tab, I'm going to select floor. I have a draw menu here. I'm going to draw lines for my floor. I'm going to select this tool here, the pick lines. And I'm going to point to the reference planes and draw a line on top of the reference planes. I'm going to select the longer line first, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to lock it in place. Select this line, lock it. Lock all four lines in place. Now I'm going to trim these corners away. I'm going to select this command, trim extend to corner. And I'm going to point to the segment of the line that I want to keep. I want to keep this segment and this segment, and it trims away the corners. Those corners are trimmed away. Select this segment and this segment, and those corners are trimmed away. And likewise at this corner. I want to specify the material of my floor. Notice right now what's specified in the properties menu is a generic floor. I want a concrete floor. I'm going to select this little pull down menu. And I notice that there is only one concrete floor here, and it's this one. It's one with a metal deck. And I want to pour it in place concrete. I'm going to pour my concrete slab in place. I'm going to select this anyway and I'll modify it. I'm going to select this edit type. I'm going to modify the type of concrete floor. And I don't want to modify this one. I want to create a new one. So I'm going to duplicate this one, create a new one, and I'll call it, called it concrete slab six inch and select OK. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to select this line three. I don't need the metal deck and I'm going to delete it. Notice that the material specified is a lightweight concrete and I don't want that. I want a different type of concrete. If I hover right over here to the right of this line, right next to the word concrete lightweight, I'll get a, a menu. It opens it up and I'm going to select this cast in place gray concrete. I'm going to double click on that, select it, and notice that my material has changed. I'm also going to change the thickness from 5 inches to 6 inches. Select OK and OK. And now notice that my concrete floor is a 6 inch concrete slab and I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and select the green check. And now I show a concrete floor. I'm going to go back to my elevations. I'm going to go to back to my south elevation. And now I'm looking at my concrete floor. There it is. And I'm going to move these elevation markers. I'm going to select this elevation. You notice there's a little uh, bubble at the end of the line. It's a grip and I can grab it and I can move these elevation markers a little bit closer to my building. So there's my concrete slab, and notice that it, when I created it, I created it at the, at the floor level, and Revit extruded down six inches. I also want to point out that these are the reference planes that we created at the beginning. You notice when we drew them on the floor plan, we drew them as lines, but they're actually planes. This is a plane, and this is a plane, and they run vertically all the way through the entire model, and they're visible at all the different levels.